Welcome to another show of this week. In our first story, two separate reports which shed light on incidents that occurred at Terrain, a private company in the capital Juba, have been released. Up next is a piece we file. A report by a special investigation team on the violence in South Sudan's capital Juba in July has been released at the United Nations headquarters in New York. The team was led by a retired Dutch Major General Patrick Kamer. Following the release of their report in New York, Stefane Dujaric, right. a spokesperson for the United Nations Secretary General, said the UN Secretary General was distressed All by right. the findings. Uh, on uh, South Sudan, the Secretary General has received uh, from Major General Patrick Kamert a report on the independent special investigation into violence in Juba in July 2016. The Secretary General is deeply distressed by these findings. He reiterates his outrage over the acts of violence committed in Juba in July and the continuing betrayal of the people of South Sudan by too many of its leaders. The Secretary General recognizes that the UN peacekeeping mission has saved hundreds of thousands of lives over the past three years, including in its protection of civilian sites, and commends the mission's personnel for their dedication. He is, nonetheless, alarmed by the serious shortcomings identified by the special investigation, which were evident in the mission's failure to fully implement its mandate to protect civilians and UN staff during the conflict. Meanwhile, a committee appointed by South Sudan's government to investigate incidents that occurred at Terrain, a private compound in the capital Juba, say they have found reasonable cause to believe that serious violations were committed by men in uniform shortly after violence broke out in July, releasing their findings to the media a couple of days ago in the capital Juba. The team headed by Deputy Minister for Justice Martisan Oturumoy said their findings show that the men in uniform who carried out an attack at the terrain compound in Juba were a group of indisciplined soldiers. He said the committee has recommended the establishment of a special court to try suspects of the terrain hotel attack. The victims must be assured that the authorities have taken all necessary steps to bring the offenders to book. The committee believes that the arrest and detention of some of the suspects implicated in the rapes that took place at the terrain will lead to identification and arrest of more suspects. The punishment of, this, of those implicated in these terrible acts will serve as deterrent to other persons intending to engage in similar, similar conduct. The committee was set up by President Salva Kiir to investigate the circumstances under which one person was killed and several civilians raped and brutally beaten. The terrain incident has attracted global attention following events of the July conflict in Juba. Welcome back. This week, the President of the Republic of Fiji, George Konorote, arrived in Juba for a two-day state visit. Our crew caught up with him when he visited the UN mission in South Sudan. After his arrival at the Juba International Airport, the Fijian President Konrote met with President Salva Kiir and then proceeded to meet the special representative of the Secretary General to the UN mission in South Sudan, Ellen Margaret Deloy. During his visit, he was briefed on the protection of civilian sites. The purpose of my visit is to thank our team on the ground. And I'm glad to hear, ma'am, that they're doing very well. You know, uh, we've got a very small contingent. But uh, it's good to know that uh, they are they're contributing. They're, you know, they're contributing well to the success of the mission. You know, we just had a briefing from the SRSG. And all I can say is I wish her well you know, with all of you good people. Trying to maintain peace. Fiji is currently holding the presidency of the United Nations General Assembly and several peacekeepers from Fiji currently serve under the UN mission in South Sudan. In our next story, the African Union Peace and Security Council has urged South Sudanese to embrace peace and dialogue so as to pave way for stability in the country. Here is what we filed. Speaking to journalists on Monday after concluding a four-day mission to the country, the chairperson of the African Union Peace and Security Council, Catherine Mwingai Mwangi, said the African Union will continue to support the peace process in the country. The Peace and Security Council and the entire AU 
will remain engaged and will continue to support South Sudan as you implement this peace agreement and to ensure that peace comes back to South Sudan. So our final word is really to urge every single South Sudanese to agree to peace, to agree to dialogue, so that finally your country can start on the road to a recovery, to, to a reconciled country and to a pro prosperous South Sudan. While in the country, the delegation met with President Kir and various stakeholders of the country's peace process. The team were in the country to assess the progress made regarding the implementation of the peace agreement and efforts around peace and reconciliation. They also had a chance to assess the economic situation while at the same time visited various protection of civilian societies. In our next story, the Unimus chief, while on a day trip to Rumbek, has reiterated her calls for peace in South Sudan. Here is the story. The special representative of the Secretary General to the United Nations Mission in South Sudan, Ellen Margaret Lloyd, has asked the people of South Sudan to live in harmony in order to achieve peace and development. Speaking while in Rumbek, Lloyd said peace and development will only be possible if people accept each other and unite for peace. We have to make sure that each and every South Sudanese can live together with each other in peace regardless of their ethnicity. Only if we achieve that can we focus on building this country that has so many resources compared to other developing countries who are rich or you could be rich if you stop fighting. The SRSG pledged continued support by the United Nations to the people of South Sudan and stressed that the UN family in the country is impartial. While in Rumbek, she held a meeting with Governor Abraham McCoy, who appreciated the work of UNMIS and appealed to the mission to continue supporting the peace implementation in the country. And on behalf of the entire community of Western Lady State, Madam, I would like to bring to your attention that people of this state are happy with your coming here to Mbek, hoping that your coming would address some of their immediate needs. This visit to Rumbek is one among several visits by the SRSG as she prepares to leave office, in which she has reiterated the need to silence guns, reconcile, and build a peaceful South Sudan. Meanwhile, at a separate event, SRSG Loi met with Japanese Special Advisor to Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Masahiko Shibayama was on a two-day visit to South Sudan where he also met with President Salva Kiir and First Vice President Tabandeng. During the meeting with SRSG Loi, Shibayama conveyed to Japanese continued and strong commitment to peace and stability in South Sudan. The SRSG and the special advisor also discussed the current political and security situation in South Sudan and operations of the Japanese contingent in Amis. I just want to assure you that seen from my perspective and our perspective, we deeply appreciate the contribution of the Japanese contingent. And as your day progresses, you will see why we need engineers in South Sudan. Before leaving the country, Shibayama also inspected some work of the Japanese peacekeepers. Our next story highlights the launch of the first civil society forum meeting, which brings together the United Nations Mission in South Sudan's Civil Affairs Division and influential community members to discuss
pertinent issues and develop solutions to peace and reconciliation. Here is the update. Possibility to really the United Nations Mission in South Sudan Civil Affairs Division has launched the first civil society forum meeting, saying that they have acknowledged that there has been a gap in communication between communities and the decision makers in the country. After identifying a breakdown of social cohesion as one of the main obstacles to peace, and identifying that the most effective way of working directly with the community can be through civil society, they took the step to bridge the gap, hoping that these efforts will be beneficial to various efforts being taken towards peace and reconciliation. It's a very challenging time where the social fabric is broken with the deep animosities running on ethnic lines and significant investment in terms of resources and time is really required to repair this fabric, promote peace and social cohesion. With this common objective of promoting reconciliation and social cohesion, we are together in this forum and through this platform we will work together to promote peace and reconciliation at the grassroots level. Through our deliberations, we hope that we can work together, build partnerships, develop activities and programs to contribute towards social cohesion, peace and reconciliation. Speaking at the Maiden Forum, which was mainly aimed at introductions and establishing direction for future forums, the UNMIS Deputy SRSG, Mustafa Samore, highlighted the importance of working together for the civil society participants so that peace and reconciliation can be achieved. You are fully part of the communities. And it is clear today what is really being said by everybody at political level and so on, that we want peace. And peace to happen, it, you have to have the whole community together, working together really to bring peace. So that's why I think really for my, my, my point of view, that uh, you as civil society organization, you are the better conduit in terms of interaction with the community so that really, I say always, positive messages can be really given to the community. Because clearly what I hear so far, everywhere I go, it's clear that today everybody is saying in South Sudan, we want peace. And it's there, the will is there, People are committed to that. It's really to make it happen. And to make it happen, this is where I see really an important role that you, you can play on that. Samora said the participants and the United Nations need to work in close collaboration to help build peace for South Sudan while not forgetting communities at the grassroots. In civil society or not, you are citizen of this country. So whatever can really help bring peace in this country, you are actually at the forefront of that. And we, as, as, as UN, as AMIS, we have to accompany you to be able to, to reach that and so on. So I think, as you know, it is important that uh, we, we all say that peace, reconciliation, and social cohesion initiatives that can mobilize really communities at grassroots level is something which is really, I can't find any better organ or organization to do that except the civil society organization. And this is, this is really key. At the first meeting, preliminary discussions on social cohesion and specific interventions that the civil society can undertake together were discussed. It is hoped that the forum will meet monthly. Welcome back. What does South Sudan's generation SDG want? Remember, SDG is the abbreviation for Sustainable Development Goals. Our next story highlights what we found out. I'm from Bono Model Primary School. My name is Konsi Luwa. I'm in primary five. I'm 10 years old.
She spoke in sign language and was very clear about her dreams. She also articulated her fears. Yeah, the only fear I have is uh, the government should have a protection to children, to special girls. For, special for us, the disabled persons, we have a lot of enemies who are currently in the in our problems, especially some men who get some death and opportunity to get us pregnant, after pregnant, after getting pregnant, they run away and leave us with children. After now, we find a number of disabled girls having children and there is nobody who is taking care of these children. And instead, after another government is not even following that case, you know after pregnant the lady, they run away and we are left with two children in our, in our house. Her colleagues spoke their voices out and they too had dreams and fears. And I like going to school. I wanted to become a teacher because the number of teachers in South Sudan are few. For the 30-odd 10-year-olds who attended the launch of the State of the World Population Report 2016 by the government and the United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA, in the capital Juba, it was a day they heard about what threatens the world development agenda. In South Sudan, the condition of the 10 years girls in deplorable social and culture believes drive this practice of earlier marriage. Teenager pregnancy, school drop out, and sexual gender-based violence. The conditions is worsened with ongoing crisis where the 10 years old has to drop out of his schools. The transitional constitution of the Republic of South Sudan provides protection for girls, child, and harmful practices, including child marriage. This year's State of the World's Population Report states that out of the 125 million 10-year-olds today, 60 million are girls who are systematically disadvantaged at the global level as they move through adolescence into adulthood. Speaking at the same event, the United Nations Population Fund country representative, Experience Fundira, said for millions of girls, the arrival of puberty marks the beginning of a lifetime of poverty, powerlessness, and missed opportunities. Whenever a girl cannot realize her full potential in life, she suffers an, an unforgivable injustice and a violation of her fundamental rights. When a girl enjoys her rights, is able to stay in school, stay healthy, and be protected from child marriage and early pregnancy, her full potential may be realized by the time she reaches adulthood. She will be better equipped to find a job, earn a good wage, and seize opportunities as they arise. The State of World Population Report shows that girls who reach adulthood with an education and their health and rights intact stand to triple their lifetime income. Higher incomes and greater productivity can help fuel progress for entire countries. And for the students, parents, government officials and other non-governmental organizations in attendance all went home without a doubt that the future of nations and communities depends on girls at the decisive age of 10. We have now come to the end of our show and as usual we will end the show with our voices of peace. Goodbye for now and join us again next week. Uh, 
my hope for South Sudan that we come as one, pe as one people, we love each other, and kids will go to school, no more street kids, and everyone will be educated, no more electricity. And girls, instead of go marriage and destroy their future, they can also go to school and build a better future for all of us. This country needs to be uh, normal, normal in the sense of um, stability, um, but not stability is not the end thing. And, uh, the lack of conflict is just is just the first step in the in the in the road to development here. Yeah. My hope is to see this country uh, goes uh, beyond peace building to development um, and uh, develop and also taking care of its people and sharing all the economic uh, resources and prosperity that comes with that. Um, and I think uh, doing all these activities, like we really have this idea at, at the back of our minds that hey, it's we want to see um, this country prosper and we want to see these young people also realize opportunities. Um, and that's what we're here for. My hopes for South Sudan is that it becomes a peaceful, forward-looking, uh, self-sufficient uh, nation. And South Sudan has all the potential to be so. And as some I hear say, maybe th these are all initial teasing problems before the country rise up to the challenge. I feel very strongly that the country has immense potential uh, to, to make it, to, to, to be a country that others will look up to. And, 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 and uh, the people uh, will benefit from the peace, in the country, the resources in the country, and build a prosperous, stable, peaceful South Sudan.